So I've taken data in ArcMap and I've begun the process of composing a map. And the first step was to symbolize the data appropriately to get the information that I want. So here I have my population data by state uh, normalized for area. So I, I'm showing right now population density by state for the contiguous US. And so this is essentially the data that I want to show. In order to finalize the map production process, I need to work within the layout. So when I'm initially working with data in ArcMap, I'm working in the data view mode, which essentially allows me to manipulate the data and do my analysis. But when I want to compose the map in order to print it or export it to another format, I need to work out in layout mode. And so layout mode is accessed by this little button in the lower left, uh, but to the right of the table of contents. And you can see that if you hover your mouse, it'll say layout view, and that's where I want to be in. Okay. So if I click on layout view, I see what the map's going to look like uh, in terms of the overall page. So the page setup, um, in order to know what you're working with, you can go under File on the main menu, and there's an option for Page and Print Setup. Okay, And this is where you control how you want the, the page to look. So it's defaults to whatever the formatting is for the printer that you're connected to. But in general, on most printers, you want essentially to work with a letter size piece of paper. And I can see right here that that's indicated down here, the page size 8.5 by 11 is a typical piece of paper. Uh, but the other important point to, to, or the other important aspect to see here is that the orientation is currently set to landscape versus portrait. Landscape is uh, horizontally wider, portrait is vertically oriented. Now, the choice of the orientation is important because it really should match match the map content that you're showing. So in the case of the US, uh, this map of the US, the landscape is more appropriate I think because the US is wider uh, longitudinally than it is um, latitudinally, right? It stretches uh, out more from an east-west perspective rather than from a north-south perspective. So I want to capture that. So I'm going to go with that particular option. Okay, so uh, the map composition is going to look essentially like this. What's important to understand when you're working with this kind of map is that um, the content of the page is everything that's inside these little shaded uh, dotted lines right here. Okay, These dotted lines indicate the absolute edge of the printable area of the map. So anything you compose within the map should not go past that line or else it just won't get printed. All right. um, when we're composing a map, we usually want some kind of a box in the map to kind of contain the information and so we call that box a neat line right so in this case by default arc already adds a neat line that encompasses the frame that we're working with of the data frame so that's that's already been kind of simplified for us um, but in this case uh, we're gonna alter that just slightly but before we get to that point uh, let's move the data so that we can make some room because we're gonna add some other elements to this map in order to help us so particularly, what's important here is the legend, right? We need to be able to see what the symbols mean, what the colors on the map mean. So most of the map elements that you access are going to be through the Insert uh, option in the main menu bar. And so you can see right off the bat, there's a lot of options here that should look familiar uh, if you've been looking over map elements. So Legend is one of those options. So I'll choose Legend, and it'll walk me through a process of selecting how I want the legend to be. Now, for the most part, the other items on this map, the rivers and lakes, um, I think are pretty self-evident, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave those off. So I'm gonna remove those. So this button right here, this arrow that points to the left, will take it out of the legend items category. And I'll remove lakes too, I think it's obvious. States is really the only thing that needs to be interpreted. I think people will, will, will understand what the state, what the lakes and rivers mean. So I'll choose next. And then it gives me the option to create a legend title. I don't think we need one. And, and we definitely don't want the word legend. I think that's obvious. It's a waste of space to even have that there. OK, then we'll go to next. And then the question is, do we want a border around the legend? I think a thin line would probably be good in kind of indicating um, uh, you know, where the legend is and where it isn't. And we'll choose next. We have other options to choose. We can go with the defaults. And then we'll choose finish. And we have a legend here. Okay. And so the legend shows essentially the data that's in the table of contents. Now the legend is dynamically linked to the table of contents. 
So if we want to make an alteration here, particularly in the titling, you actually do it over here. So in this case, for example, this pop 2005 divided by square miles, that's better communicated by simply saying pop density right, per square mile. So I'll just, and you'll see that reflected right there. Uh, states, we may or may not want that. I could delete that, okay? And then that disappears, right? So now it looks a little cleaner, okay? Now the orientation of it, it's kind of tall, and I don't want it to be competing with the main boxed area of the map content area. So if I double click on that legend, it brings up this item, uh, it's legend properties where I can manipulate the items. And if I'm in the items uh, tab, and I click on style, I can choose um, different ways of laying out the the legend. So for example, if I choose this one, heading, you'll see the option right here. It lays it out horizontally with these um, kind of tilted titles. I kind of like that because for the purposes of our map, I don't want the legend to be too tall because then it's competing with the, the rest of the map. So I'll, I'll go with that one. I'll say OK. All right. And you see now it's uh, a little more horizontally oriented. I'm going to shrink it by grabbing the lower corner, just bringing it down a, oh, just a smidgen, and I'm going to line it up over here. Okay. And the the virtue of this one is that it it has a horizontal orientation to it, which kind of mimics the larger map. So I'm kind of creating a sense of balance here. Okay. Other items I want to add in here. I need to definitely add a scale bar. Okay. Lots of different options, totally up to you. Choose a scale bar, hit OK, and add the scale there. All right. Now, what's important here, I think, too, is that when you produce a scale, just good practice to end the number on a round number. So right now, mine extends from 0 to 1,100 miles. So um, I want it to be end in 1,000, to be a nice round number. So the way that I do that is I just click on it once to highlight it bring up the bounding box and I click and drag bring it in just a tad bit a little bit more and then eventually you'll see it comes to a thousand miles so a nice round number okay if you want to change something else about that legend you just either right click or double click on it and you'll bring up the properties for that item so under the scales and unit units um, tab you can actually change whether you're using miles or say if you wanted to use kilometers Right, which would be common most of the rest of the planet, um, you could choose that too. But we'll go with miles because we're probably producing this map for an American audience and Americans are more comfortable with miles than they are with kilometers. Okay, so what else do we need on this map? Well, we probably need um, a title. So there's an option for title. And this map is population density by state, and I'll put the year 2005, all right, and there's a title right there. Um, what am I missing? Oh, I need orientation. I need to show uh, which way is north, right, because that's how we indicate orientation of a map. Now, I have a couple options here. I could put in a north arrow, which I think is what most, most people think of when it comes to uh, orientation. And you have a lot of different options for north arrows. Um, but I think that might actually be problematic. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i show you why. So let's just add one for the moment to, um, to, to make the point clear. So I'll choose uh, one randomly. And it's very small here. Let's make it larger so we can see it. OK. But another way to show orientation um, and a good check to see whether or not you're showing it properly is to work with what's called a graticule instead of uh, the north arrow. So I'm going to highlight the data frame and then right click on it and go to the properties. Okay, And in the data frame properties window there's an op a tab called grids. And I click on that and I choose new grid. Okay, And what I'm going to want to add is this graticule, right? The lines that indicate lines of longitude and latitude. And I'll choose next and you can alter the size and the spacing of them. I'm going to choose all the defaults for the moment. And we'll just, again, choose all the defaults. 
and hit OK. And what it does is it adds this graticule to the data frame, right? Now, if you can think back to how we show direction, you know that the lines of longitude indicate true north, right? Because all lines of longitude converge at the North Pole. So that's true north. Now look at our north arrow in comparison to, oops, didn't mean to do that, comparison to our lines of longitude, right? It's not actually correct. Now, how could we fix that? Well, a couple ways. One, we could just leave it off entirely because it doesn't really show true north for the entire map. Only these lines indicate north. But what we could do is we could alter its orientation slightly to reflect that. And if you right click or double click on the north arrow, you can actually change the angle at which it's rotated. So let's say that I change it to, let's say 25. Okay, That'll change the orientation slightly and you can kind of experiment with it to see uh, when it gets to where you want it to be. So I'm going to say change it to, that's not quite that much, let's go 10. So if I did that, I get something that's a little more characteristic or rather appropriate for what I'm doing. And that's entirely appropriate. Of course the thing is, if you're producing this map for somebody else, the question that they might have is, is this true across the entire map? And of course it isn't true because north varies depending on where you are in this area. So I think in this particular case the north arrow is inappropriate for this uh, kind of map. So I'm going to stick with my uh, graticule lines as a way of indicating orientation. Okay, last thing here. I need to add in a bit of information about the map in terms of attribution. So I'm going to insert um, some text which automatically gets defaulted toward the middle of the map. So I'm going to click again to make sure you know which one you're clicking on. Put it over here. And in this text, I double click on it to open up the properties and I'm going to put in the information about the map. So uh, one of the things you want to know, you want to put in here is the projection information. So as you might remember, see, well, I don't remember actually. <laughs> let's, let's go back. What was the projection here? Oh, USA contiguous Alberts equal area conics. I'm just going to copy this, make it easier. Paste that in there. Get rid of those underscores so it looks a little neater. Alright, so that's a projection. The data source, well, let's say I checked out the metadata. I know this came from the US Census 2005. Okay, and then my name, because I'm the one that composed it, and then the date. Let's say right now it is 10-21-2013. Okay. Alright, and let's there we go. Okay. Um, one last thing. I see that the data frame neat line um, is only really encompassing the immediate map area, but we've got kind of this outer stuff like the legend, the scale, and the attribution information that's kind of outside of the neat line. So what we could do is we could insert another neat line, which I think is a good idea in this case. Right? And it asks you how do you want to do it? I want to place it around all the elements, right? and it creates a neat line but again the neat line here is outside of the printable area so we need to drag that neat line in so it's inside the printable area inside that little dotted line Okay. Some on some printers you can go right on the dotted line but it really depends on the printer uh, the data frame when it, we're going to have to let's see the data frame with the map, we're going to have to bring in just a bit so it's not so close. I'll bring that up just a tad bit. There we go. Okay. So we've got our legend, scale, attribution information, title, orientation, our map content. It's nicely symbolized. So I think we're ready to go. So the last bit here, you're going to give this to somebody. Um, the simplest thing is to export this map as an image. And then that way you can give it to somebody 
and it'll hold true wherever they open it. So in order to export a map as an image, you're going to go to the file menu on the main menu bar and then choose export map. Choose and then when the export map shows up, you want to choose the location where you're going to save it to. So for this purposes, I'm going to put it on the on the desktop. You want to give it a name that includes your last name and then the word map. And you want to specify that it is a type JPEG, okay? There's many types of image formats. The JPEG is a simple one. It's relatively small and holds quality for fairly well. Um, you can choose, if you wanted to really, really make sure that the image quality got preserved, you might choose a TIFF or a tagged image file format. But I think for our purposes, JPEG is just fine. I don't want it because TIFFs can be huge images. Lastly, make sure the resolution is adequate. So for a printed map, you generally want 300 to 600 DPI. But for the purposes of our assignment, uh, don't go above 300 DPI because then the map gets kind of large. So 150 to 300 DPI is adequate. So once you've chosen the, what you put in the name, you know where it's going. The save is type the JPEG. Resolution is correct. Just hit save. And then you save it into that location. And it'll give you an output, tell you that it's working. And once you've saved that, you should have on the location where you saved it to a file a JPEG file and if you have an image viewing program on your computer you can double click on it and there you have your map and you're ready to go and that's it